parts of Canada reached nearly 50 degrees Celsius and high temperatures have led to hundreds of deaths. Europe too is experiencing one of the hottest summers on record. Climate researchers say it's a sign global warming may have passed a critical tipping point. Living near an outdoor swimming pool during a heat wave is a fortunate thing. The temperature soared so high in Alberta, Canada, that candy melted. It's a random event. It's a very seldom event in observations. You don't see this over the last 100 or maybe 150 years, and there's no paleoclimatic evidence from, from tree rings, from other uh, archives that would support that this has been experienced in the past. Such heat may be a freak event, but what role do human activities on Earth play in climate change? So the human activities with the release of uh, um, greenhouse gases, CO2, methane, and so on, are leading to uh, increase of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and they also prevent that the heat from from the Earth is uh, is leaving the the atmosphere. So it's collecting the heat, um, and it leads to a, to a warming. This warming was modeled by scientists in the U.S., Canada, and Europe for a World Weather Attribution Report. Researchers say hitting nearly 50 degrees in Western North America is virtually impossible without climate change caused by people. They estimate this global warming made the heat wave 150 times more likely. This is not a British Columbia problem. It's not a Canada problem. It is a global challenge. And we all need to have citizens of the world coming together, as we have, quite frankly, to address a global pandemic. There is a lot of uncertainty in the data covering the frequency of heat waves as the phenomenon was so extreme. But something the scientific community does agree on is that climate change played a big role. For more, I'm joined by DW's environment reporter, Ajit Naranjan. Ajit, thanks so much for coming in. And this is an unprecedented heat wave in the Pacific North Northwest, and it was unrelenting. I mean, so many deaths, nearly 500 heat-related deaths in British Columbia alone. Um, put, putting that into perspective, uh, that's more than COVID, for instance, in the same area. Is the gravity of this situation sort of sinking in? Yes, I mean, it completely dispels the myth that climate change is something happening in the future for our grandchildren or something that happens only far away in kind of poor countries. I mean, this is the USA, and scientists are telling us that this devastating heat wave that we've just seen on our screens was made 150 times more likely because of climate change and about two degrees Celsius hotter. And that's from this study published this morning by the World Weather Attribution Initiative. And what they found was that these record-breaking temperatures would have been virtually impossible without climate change. How are scientists so sure? I mean, how have they come to this conclusion? So, I mean, what scientists already knew, and I'm quoting from the report here, is that every heat wave occurring today is made more likely and more intense by climate change. And this is simple physics, essentially. Now, we, verif we verified this with other leading climate scientists. But essentially, every time over the last couple of hundred years, when people, mainly in rich countries, have burn fossil fuels, they've released gases that kind of act like a greenhouse around the Earth. And what these do is they trap the heat from the sun, from the sunlight, and they raise the global temperatures. And what this means kind of for natural weather, like weather falls within a distribution, you get cold weather, you get hot weather. But what this does is it shifts the entire distribution higher. And so what you end up with is that these extremes at the very top end, you see temperatures like this 49.6 degrees Celsius we saw in British Columbia that just completely blow past, well past what we're used to. And can handle, really. I mean, that's extraordinarily hot and I'm Australian, so... <laughs> um, this may seem like an obvious question, but why is this study such a big deal? So there's two things, really. First is that scientists have gotten much better at attributing individual weather events to global warming, to climate change, quickly. I mean, so within the space of a week, we went from seeing a wildfire wipe out the village of Lytton in British Columbia, to scientists being able to say quantitatively to what extent climate change affected the heat wave that kind of drove, drove a lot of the suffering. The second reason, which is maybe more important, I mean, on that same day that Lytton broke its heat, uh, heat record, temperature record, two days before the wildfire hit it, another study published in the journal Nature found that climate lawsuits aren't keeping up with the latest climate science. And what this means is that we can hold people accountable for kind of the damage that we're seeing much better 
if scientists can quickly attribute, quickly and confidently attribute the extent to which global warming played a role in an individual extreme weather event. Do you think this study or this weather event, in fact, will lead to any real change? Yeah, you can already see people waking up. You can see politicians taking notice and talking about the effects of climate change much more strongly. We know public awareness around extreme weather events does change and people's relationship to climate change does change. But to actually make change come out of this on a meaningful scale, scientists have a whole host of things that they say would need to happen to actively combat the effects of global warming, to stop heat waves becoming longer, stronger and more frequent. All right, Angie, thanks very much. DW Environment reporter Angie Naranjan. I'm now joined by Dr Schalke Philip. She's co-lead of this study and researcher at the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute. Schalke, how confident... I mean, we heard that this is a freak event, but how confident are you that uh, humanity has, has a hand in this? Well, it's totally clear that uh, without human-induced climate change, this event would have been virtually impossible. It has been uh, made um, at least... Um, uh, hundred, to, sorry, it is being made at least 150 times more likely than it was in the past. And because it's now even uh, really very uh, extreme, you can imagine that in the past, without climate change, it would have been uh, virtually impossible. So although we don't know all mechanisms that played a role in here, and we need to further investigate that, uh, we do know that climate change does play a role. Well, in Canada, in the past five days, there have been nearly 500 uh, uh, deaths related to the extreme heat. That's more than from COVID in that time. Do you think the gravity of what's happening is slowly sinking in? Um, yes, I think so. Well, the problem is with uh, cold waves or uh, flooding, uh, the reported number of deaths is often immediately available. And with heat waves, they often come in quite late. So the fact that we already see so many deaths uh, from this heat wave is, is really amazing. That, that, and I'm sure that uh, later there will be uh, more data available and this number will go up. But I think this is really a warning and uh, people are getting more aware of it. Uh, talking about data, your, your study predicts more heat waves uh, like this in the future and there's uh, a need to adapt uh, to that, buildings for example. Can that be done without raising carbon emissions uh, even further? Uh, I think we have to go uh, two ways. So we both have to uh, stop or reduce emitting uh, carbon, uh, but we also uh, have to have another pathway in which we just make heat plants and take care of the people that are vulnerable. It really helps uh, when you have heat plants and, um, for instance, just let your uh, neighbor know that they should actually drink enough uh, water uh, to... Um, prevent dehydration and also the cooling central and more uh, air conditioning. That's, that's also uh, needed, even if we stop emitting uh, carbon dioxide. So what do the, your findings mean for the rest of the world? Well, we know now that such an extreme heat wave can actually occur, even with this uh, record broken by five degrees. So last year or two years ago, we were even shocked that in the Netherlands, a uh, record was broken by 1.8 degrees. And this is now five degrees. So I think we should take it as a warning that this uh, extremity can actually happen already today. Do you think this is a this is the top level? I mean, we're hearing, about, you know, nearly 50 degrees in, in, in Canada. Can it get worse? Can it get even hotter? Well, we have to investigate that. We, we just don't know. We actually thought this was not possible, but it just happened. So, um, yeah, we still have to investigate whether this is just a very unusual event and about the upper threshold or that other uh, nonlinearities start to play a role. And we did pass a certain threshold. But that's really uh, needs some more time. And we can't do that uh, in, in just uh, less than 10 days. So that needs a couple of months uh, before we can give an answer to that. Dr. Schalke Philip, thank you very much for your time.